Good day, students. So welcome to part two of the Geometry Regents exam review. We're going to be going over um, problems six to ten uh, from the January 2014 release test problems, okay? Uh, more collections of this clips can be found on math.serve.com slash test prep. So feel free to visit this site uh, for more uh, information, tools, and resources. All right, let's take a look at problem six. Um, problem six, we are asked, it says the right rectangular prism is shown in the diagram below. Which pair of edges are not coplanar? So we have a collection of the edges here, and we ask for which pair are not coplanar. So let's just um, set up a coordinate system here. Let's say we have our, this is our, um, let's access is that. This is our y-axis, and then we have our x-axis, like this. And then let's call this our z-axis. Okay, because we're dealing with a 3D object, we need to have three variables, okay? So let's call this Y up and down, standard Y axis. And then let's call this our X axis. And then let's call this one going back and forth, our Z axis. Now, if you have any two lines going in the same direction of an axis are going to be coplanar because you can have one plane going through two uh, parallel lines, okay? So two lines are parallel, they're coplanar. So let's see um, which set of lines fall on different axes. Okay, so we have one segment on the Y and the other segment on an axis that's not uh, parallel to the Y axis or in the direction of the Y axis, then they're gonna be non-parallel, which implies that they're not coplanar. Okay, so let's look at problem number one, BF and um, CG. So BF, let's write this down. So for number one, segment BF, what direction is that? Segment BF is right here. Segment BF is going in the Y direction. So let's put Y. And then segment CG. What direction is the CG going? CG is also going in the Y direction. Okay? So that implies that they're parallel. And since they're parallel, that implies that they're coplanar also. All right, so if you're going in the same direction of an axis, then that means that they are coplanar because they're parallel. Now let's look at option uh, number two. So for number two, we have BF. BF we know is going in the up and down direction in the direction of the Y axis. How about um, DH? Segment DH. Segment DH is also going up and down in the direction of the Y axis. So that means that these two segments are parallel, which means that they are coplanar. Okay, because parallel lines are coplanar. If you have two lines that are parallel, you can have a unique plane that goes through those both lines, all right? Option three, segment EF and CD. Let's look at EF. You see EF is going in the Z direction, back and forth, in the Z direction. Uh, how about CD? CD is going back and forth in the Z direction, okay? So CD, segment CD is going in the Z direction. Since they're going in the same direction, they're going to be parallel. And if they're parallel, that implies that they are coplanar also. All right, so by method of elimination, we can see that the answer is four. Well, let's just go ahead and verify that our answer is in fact correct, okay? So for option four, we have segment EF again. Segment EF is going in the back and forth the direction, the Z direction, and BC, where is BC? BC is going in the X direction, side to side. Okay? So what does this mean? This means that they are not parallel. They are not parallel. Okay? So since they are not parallel, that means that they are not coplanar. All right? Remember, in order for two lines to be coplanar, they must be parallel. Since EF is not parallel to BC, uh, let me just go up. Since EF is not parallel to BC, um, that means that they are not coplanar and not parallel also, okay? All right, let's take a look at problem number seven. So problem seven, it says that how many points in a coordinate plane are three units from the origin and also equidistance from both the x-axis and the y-axis? So the locus of points that are a fixed number of units from a point what does what kind of shape does that form so if i have let's say i have an origin right here and the locus of points uh, a fixed units from that point 
is defined by a circle. Okay? So locus of points from a fixed point is a circle. Now, um, locus of points equidistant from two perpendicular lines or two intersecting lines is basically um, the line that divides the angle that bisects, I'm sorry, that bisect the angles that the two intersecting lines form. So this is the angle that's formed here. So this line right here is a locus of points that are equidistant from both lines. It bisects that angle and that line also. Okay. So the line that bisects the angle of these two lines are the locus of points that are equidistant from both lines. All right, so what are we going to do now? What we're going to do is we're going to unite these two cases together, okay? So locus of points equidistance from a point, and then this is locus of distance equidistant from two intersecting lines. All right? This one is a circle, and this is two lines that bisect the angle between the two intersecting lines. So if we unite these two, the intersection will be our solution set. Okay? So let's go ahead and um, overlay both of them together. Let's um, first of all graph the first scenario. We graph our y-axis and our x-axis. So locus of points, let's label our axis first, x and y, that are equidistant, that are three units from the origin. This is the origin right here. Three units from the origin, locus of points three units from the origin is a circle with radius three. So let's go ahead and graph that, two, three. Okay, so no matter what direction you go, you're going to be three units from the center. Okay, let me try and fix my circle a little bit. Make it three units. Okay, much better. All right, so that satisfies case number one. Now, it also we also need um, locus of points that equidistant from the x and y axis. So we need the bisectors of the two angles. Okay, so this would be the first bisector right here. So that line that I just that I just drawn is equidistant from both lines, both the x and the y. Okay, you have that line, and then you also have this line right here also. Okay, so those are the locus of uh, points that are equidistant from two intersecting lines. All right, now the intersection of the two solutions will give us our final answer. So how, where does the, the circle and the two lines that we drew intersect? They intersect here, one, two, three, four. So these four points are equidistant from the origin and equidistant from the x and the y axis. All right. So the question asks, well, how many points satisfies both requirements? The answer is four. All right, let's move on to problem number eight. Problem eight says that as shown in the, below, the medians ABC intersect at D. D is a centroid. If the length BE is 12, what is the length of segment BD? Okay, so what you want to know is that when you have intersecting medians um, on a triangle, it divides up the, uh, the centroid, divides up the median in a ratio of 2 to 1. Okay, so the ratio of BD, the ratio of BD to DE is 2 to 1. Okay? Another way to look at it is that the longer portion of the median is always two third of the entire length. And guess what? The shorter portion is always one third of the entire length. Okay? So that's one quick way of doing it. So uh, that's what I'm going to use to solve this problem. So our formulas are as follows. Formulas for um, uh, medians is that segment BD, the longer of the, of the medians, um, BD is equal to two-third of the entire median. Okay, so two-third of BE. 
and DE, okay, DE is one third of VE. The question asks to find VD, so we're going to be using the first formula. So using the first formula, we're going to have VD is equal to two third of the entire length. VE is 12 units long, 12. Okay, so we're going to reduce that. You have 24 over 3. Final answer is 8. So answer to number 8 is 1. So just remembering these two formulas, you're good to go. This ratio, it, it makes sense, but it's harder to work with. Just using these formulas, you, you should be fine. All right, let's take a look at problem number 9. It says the solution to the system of equations y equals x squared minus 2 and y equals x is all right so for number nine it says the solution of the system of equations y equals x squared minus two and y equals x is um there are two ways we could actually three ways you can do this you can solve this by guessing check just plug in the numbers by substitution and see which one satisfies with both equations you can solve this by graphing and you can solve this by um factoring Okay, I'm going to use an, the factoring. I'm going to use the algebraic method because it's easiest uh, to do and it's quicker too. Not necessarily easy, but it's quick. Now, um, to solve this equation, we have y equals x squared minus 2 and y equals x. Now, you remember substitution, right? In substitution, you can set the value of one variable into the other equation. So since y is equal to x, I can substitute x for y in the first equation. So I can have x is equal to x squared minus 2. Now how do we solve a quadratic equation? You have to put it in standard form and solve by factoring, okay? So I'll subtract x from both sides. Subtract x, subtract x. And then we're going to have x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0 and we'll factor this by grouping okay solve this by um, factorization all right so how do we factor this term we can use the x game to factor this so let's make our little x um, ac goes on top ac is negative 2 b goes on the bottom negative 1 you learned how to factor in algebra so two numbers are multiplied to give you negative 2 and add to give you 1 negative 2 and positive 1. So this factored form, the factored form of this expression is x minus 2 times x plus 1. Okay? So it doesn't mean the haste to say negative 2 and positive 1 are your answers. Negative 2, or well, we don't have that option there. Yeah, negative 2 and positive 1. Don't be hurry, in a hurry to do that. The correct answer involves using the zero product property. x minus 2 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, to solve this, you end up with x equals positive 2, and this one you have x equals negative 1. So any coordinates where x is 2 and x is negative 1, those are our answers, all right? So we can see that um, 2, negative 1, answer for number 9 is option number 2, okay? So that's that. All right, let's take a look at question number 10. Number 9 looked a lot like algebra. And uh, question 10 is algebra 2. So let's see. Uh, it says line L passes through um, point 0.53 and it's parallel to line K whose equation is 5x plus y equals 6. An equation of, the, of line L is. So in order to write down the equation of line L, we need um, two things. We need the slope and the y-intercept. Okay. So let's go ahead and find the slope first. So since L is parallel to K, that implies that the slope of line L will be equal to the slope of line K. All right, so let's go ahead and determine what the slope of line K is, and then we can use that to find the slope of line L, basically the same thing. So find, we want to find the slope of L first. That's our first task. Okay, so starting with k, from k we know that we have 5x plus y is equal to 6. Let's put it in slope-intercept form to find out what m is. All right, so to do that, we we'll subtract 5x from both sides. And then you have y equals negative 5x plus 6. 
So this implies that the slope of one k is equal to negative five. How do we know that? Remember y equals mx plus v. m is the slope and v is your y-intercept. All right, so um, slope of line k is negative five, so that follows that the slope of line l is also negative five. So we have we now ha we have the slope of line l. Now what we're going to do is we want to find the y-intercept of line l. Okay, so we want to find on color. Um, we want to find b of line l, the y-intercept. So to find a y-intercept, you're simply going to use y equals mx plus b equation. In this uh, case, m is the slope we've already found, negative b, negative 5. Do you know what x and y are? What are the points that are on line l? Or what is the point on line l? Or what, line, what point does line l go through? Line l goes through 5, 3. Look at this, 5, 3. So this is the x-coordinate, and that's the y-coordinate. So we're going to plug in those two values here, 5, 3. Now, with this information, we can now find this y-intercept of line L. Okay? Because we know B is question mark. Now, let's plug everything in. We're going to have um, y, 3, equals m, negative 5, times x, 5, plus B. So we have 3 equals negative 25 plus B. You add 25 from, to both sides, you have b is equal to 28. All right, now that we have the slope and the y-intercept, we're almost there. We're just going to put both of them together in the um, slope-intercept form of the equation of a line, and that will be the final result. Okay, so we're going to plug it into y equals mx plus b. We're going to plug in m and b. Okay, so y equals m negative 5x plus b, which is 28. So there goes our final answer, and it's option number 2 for number 10. So that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. You can feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other uh, parts of this review installment. And do give us a thumbs up if you like this presentation. We really appreciate it. More clips can be found on mathcoachsev.com slash test prep. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.